would you be open to hearing more about that? Heck yeah, let's uh, do it. Yeah, okay. is it is it gonna help us not be as awkward at the beginning of the podcast? <laughs> there you go. So you gotta, you gotta start. You're starting to ask questions. Great question. Um, as of Monday, fourteen ninety three. Um, I just checked while we're here. So let's, let's go. go. On fire. So, let's go. I and it's, some people might say it's unfair. O'Donnell, you're speaking. You got lucky because you've been doing this for a long time. Yes, I got lucky because I've been doing it for a long time. Exactly, I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, so therefore, yeah. of course, I should be getting lucky. We've got hey, hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit before. podcast, wow. where we talk about entrepreneurship, mindset, and of course, how to turn your content into profit. Let's go. Go to contentsprofit.com, get started today, and join the community. Fonzie, give me a C. A C? What? Give me a no. <laughs> yeah, if we, if we spell the whole thing, we're, ah, we're, we're, we're going to take a while. I was, I was so confused. I was like, wait, what, what is this new I, move? I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> tell me, tell me, what are we talking about today? Guys, today we're talking <laughs> how to successfully sell with content. Oh, and I love this. We're going to deep dive. But I think there's a few misconceptions here, here and there about selling with content or through content we're gonna figure it all out we're gonna oh. get all the answers from today's guest let's go um before we get started though i have yeah. a question for you What's very important question? question let me know do we have a sponsor today indeed we do thank you let's for asking go. Good, sir and today's sponsor is your own the biz bros yes we sponsor our own show with content momentum mm. if you mm. need a team that can multi-purpose your content and help you with the strategies Ooh. to turn your content into profit we're here to help you out. Slide in the DMs at Beast Bros Co. on Facebook, on Instagram. If you send us a little message, that'll be absolutely yeah. amazing. And you're listening, <laughs> please do us a favor and go ahead and follow the show if this show helps you move forward with incredible golden boulders that these guests are dropping every single week on Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays on your favorite podcasting platform. And Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, live right here, Contents Profit. That mm. is right. And if today's guests help you move one step closer to your goal, please don't forget to share this episode because you might be doing the same exact thing for somebody else and and leave a five-star review episode 213 and today we have a master salesman here with us so if you have been struggling to turn your conversations into conversation your into conversations, conversions. into conversions. Oh, baby. This is the episode for you, my friend. I know. That was a, a wordplay that I, I tried right there. Oh, I, I, I think a little a little maybe cliche, but I think it, it, it it's perfect for the moment, guys. Today, we met today's guest <laughs> at one of Callen Lee's webinar. He was teaching hundreds of salesmen how to properly use Callen Lee to book and close more sales calls. So I put his own technique to the test. And guess what? It worked. We got him on the podcast. Omnipresence outreach. Let's go. Right. We, what happened? Hold on, hold on. What, oh, no. what happened? We got unplugged, guys. We got unplugged from the set. That is the magic of being live. We got the other <laughs> camera right here. Let's go. Let's go. That is the magic of going live. I'm going to read your part of the intro so we keep going. Today's guest is the founder of the Sales Evangelist. He's also the host of the Sales Evangelist podcast and soon to be a published author. But most importantly, he is a family man. Can't wait to dig in. Please welcome the Jamaican businessman, the sales evangelist himself, Donald Kelly. Woohoo! Bring it on. Let's go. What's up, Donald? How you doing? Oh, no, we cannot hear you. We cannot hear you, Donald. It's wow, okay. talk about a live there show. There we go. There we Look are. At that. Let's Look at go. That. <laughs> I mean, that, that's a beautiful part about being, being live. Uh, no, no, I got a question live. for you. Have you ever yeah. been in a show <laughs> this accidental at the beginning? Huh? No, see, it wasn't even accidental. It was just like the way it's supposed to happen. Let's you know? go. You know? We just woke everybody up and got their attention, and that's yeah. what we want. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I, 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 this side angle right here is, is odd. It's the first time we do the show with the side angle. Angle. But I, I think this is, we might be doing this for the first time ever because we're talking to you, but then we're gonna talk <laughs> to the audience over here. So what, what's gonna happen? What are we? What are we? What are we doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Donald, first of all, man, thank you so much for coming here. Uh, thank you so much for dealing with our awkwardness as well. Oh, and please. dude, I I loved the the webinar that you did at Calendly. I mean, I said it in the intro. As soon as you were done, I'm like, 
I'm going to put one of these techniques to the test, right? <laughs> Actually, I put two to the test. One was with you, some, the other one was with somebody else. And immediately worked. You immediately answered. And I was like, this is unbelievable. Someone like you that has 1,400 podcast episodes, right? A very yeah. big audience on LinkedIn. And here I am making one of these omnipresence outreach <laughs> and I got the attention, right? And you managed to come here today, man. So thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I, I, I love when people apply this stuff because it works. And I think that's the biggest thing. That's the biggest like level of like, uh, um, you know, a biggest uh, compliment that you can give to somebody who gives education or provide education. And if you go back to like your high school or mm. your middle school, you're, like your teachers who probably they gave you advice and you took those advice and you apply them. That makes them if you go back at you know five years later like you know you had a big impact on my life mr russell because you said this once in class and i took that and applied it and this is where i'm at those teachers will be like so happy like this is why i get 30 40 thousand dollars a year because of that and then in my case probably get a little paid a little bit more than that yeah. but it's <laughs> yeah it's just cool when i'm able to see people yeah. apply to stuff and see results because that's what it's all about is sharing yeah. what's working and, and help them to be successful i, I have a question this, this is sure. like a little tangent right here but you said Thank you, Mr. Russell, right? In what you said right now. Is it because we were mentioning Funnel Hacking Live and you know, oh. is it because of that? Because I'm like, dude, if that, Here's if you my put that in Mr. There. Russell was, you know, Donald's fifth grade uh, professor. I'm just going to put that out. Maybe. I'm like, man, what no. a way to build some reporting here. <laughs> no, but that's all good. Though. I mean, you know, it could be all just like all the connection. I have one of my uh, clients and uh, he he went to Funnel Hack a lot. Funnel Funnel. Hacker Live, and he was on stage. He got oh, a nice. Um, he represented one of his uh, the companies that he worked with at one point. That's amazing. Um, and they made it to two comma clubs. So Andres Escobar, his company's called Review Biz. So big yes, shout out to them. Let's but go. He, he got that uh, the two comma club. But so when you mentioned that, I was like, oh cool, you probably got a chance to see each other and didn't realize it. Probably. Yeah. Um, Who then, know? Uh, hey. But Russell, I had a history teacher named Mr. Russell. It was fun being in his class. I wouldn't say he had the deepest impact on my life, but uh, yeah. it was fun. I just saw yeah. him right there. But, uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. It. Jonah, and what, what you just but, said is so, is so important, right? Like when we really uh, got momentum, when we really started sure. applying the things that we we're learning, right? Especially in this today, days and age, right? That we go online and we go to, we have all these resources and, and literally like if we apply ourselves and we consistently execute, right? We will get results, right? And, and it's so important because for the first like three years, maybe we're in that loop that we were like learning and then learning and then implementing mm. just a little bit and then learning again. And nothing like really, really worked out for us because of that reason. So I thank you so much for bringing that up. And uh, I really want to ask you like, why, why sales? Like what was your background that you really got into this, you know, for us, for the audience um, that why is like Calendly calling you being like, hey, you need to talk about this to our <laughs> incredible audience. Right. I think this I is wanna, oh. I want to add a, a layer. I want to add a little bit <laughs> la a, a layer under that question too. you know, I I read a little bit about your bio. I actually heard a little bit in, in some other interviews. Right. And yeah. you come from, from Jamaica, right? That's why in the interview I was like, yeah, the, yeah, the Jamaican <laughs> businessman, right? And I was like, this is so cool, right? And you say you you saw the hustle and that you wanted to be this businessman, right? Uh, yeah. From when, when you were a child. So if you can, you know, kind of like connect that to the question of my brother, I, would, I think it would be absolutely amazing. Well, you stole the answer then because that's it. <laughs> because uh, as a kid, seeing that in Jamaica, seeing my family do in jamaica growing up like it's not like you know the u.s where you can just go and say okay I, I i finished my degree i'm gonna go put my job on indeed my my uh, resume of fill out and and get a job like it it doesn't go that way like yeah. it's hard it's, it's still classified as a third world country so there's still a little bit of challenges that you you have so the average income i think in jamaica for a year i think it's like 500 dollars uh, well, for for some some crazy yep. low number, it's ridiculous. It's, it's ra uh, wow. really low. So you 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 find people that are going to figure out ways that they're going to make money um, to make things happen. So individuals will they will hustle, right? They will go out and you know sell things like uh, products or, or whatnot. Um, I think it's five hundred dollars per month. Please forgive me on that. Um, but the yeah. the point though is that it's, it's it's low relative to what we're earning here in the United mm -hmm. States. So there's not a lot of jobs and exports. One of the biggest export out of Jamaica is its people, where they will go oh, to wow. the UK because the education system is is amazing. 
So to go to UK, go to North America, to England, I mean, to uh, US or to Canada and to find opportunities there. So now mm. you have folks who are in Jamaica and they're like, well, I can't get that job as like the next tour guide or I can't get another opportunity. You know, there's not that many stuff. I'm going to yeah. create my own tour guide business or I'm going to go out and, and start selling some stuff. And that's what I saw. I didn't see it as sales. I just saw oh. it as like, as you know, you just become a businessman. So as a kid, I wanted to get some food. I mean, some uh, not food, some toys, and uh, the I got some food, some little candies, and I put them in little bags, um, some cookies, put them in little bags, and I started selling that. And I remember wow. one time I wanted to get free resources, so I went up to the tree. We had trees and uh, a mango tree, and I would pick the mangoes and put them out on the little the area, and I was trying to sell them. And um, and then that, that was like my first uh, ad, my first. Uh, entry into this online right. uh, not online into this business world of trying to sell something i didn't make any money yeah but yeah. i tried and i think yeah. that was so that went on so when you come towards sales when i came to the us that's the same type of thing that i did i found little jobs and i mm. created little things in middle school and so i was a kid that was selling candy in middle school and then i went to high school and i was trying to find mo get money for like holidays and you know back to school and coming yeah. from a single parent home my mom couldn't do all that stuff so we had to figure out ways to do that yeah. and then in college my buddies and several friends and people that i knew close to me said you should think about sales and mm -hmm. i didn't know all that experience was leading me to sales it was just being a businessman and that is yeah. um, how i eventually came to this path yeah interesting so you know i heard in one of the podcasts that you were featured that Kind of like the word hustling, right? Like you were hustling there in Jamaica, like trying to make this work. And you said that the, the definition of like hustling has changed in the last decade or so, right? But I'm curious, like what, what do you see right now? Because it seems like when you came here, you were still in that mindset of I'm going to make it work, right? I'm going to find a path no matter what. And then seems like sales was, was the path right? That, that led you to where you are right now. So I'm curious, do you still hustle in a way, right? What are your thoughts around that and around people that are starting their own business that are getting into sales, right? I mean, once you start your own business at first, you are the one doing the selling. And that's something that people need to realize faster, right? Like I struggled to came along, <laughs> uh, came across that conclusion. I was like, oh, guess what? Uh, I don't have a business if I don't have clients, right? We got to go out there and, <laughs> and, and sell some. Um, and it, it has been a, a challenge, honestly, right? To, to get into the role of the salesman. So I'm curious, how does this hustle translate into today? Yeah, great. And, uh, and there's another question I want to go back to, and I'll make sure I put that as like a caveat to respond regarding how the stuff came with Calendly, because I think you're going to like the answer to that. And I don't yes. think you know the answer yet, um, but it ties very closely with what you guys uh, focus on. Um, but the, to, so this, this idea of the hustle, and I know hustle gets this bad a term, bad name nowadays. Yeah. Um, and I really just want to just like clarify, I'm not trying to say anything that, you know, that everybody who does like a side gig, you could call it whatever. Somebody doing Uber on a side is a side gig. Um, it's yeah. a side hustle, something, something else that you're doing. But I'm not saying that you stay up all night and you don't sleep and that you're, if you do this, it's going to work. Things still, bad things still happen and situations yeah. still don't work out. Oftentimes you get lucky. And the way I define luck is that it's opportunity to meet hard work. You put mm -hmm. the work in, it's t it's crazy how all of a sudden you start getting luckier um, the more the more work you put in. So I, I feel that you still need to, you need to make, the, you need still need to do your hustling part per se. And early on in my career, when I first started doing this, I did do a lot of hustle, meaning I ran fast. I did a lot of stuff. I I try I try to make it work. I was doing my full time job, and I was getting up early in the morning or staying up, you know, to you know, in the, staying up later in the evening to do some interviews and sacrifice the time of going out and hanging out with friends. And I did a couple podcast interviews and went to bed and got my sleep. And I yeah. got up early because I go to early to bed or you know early to rise. So was, when I say I stayed up late, I was probably staying up to like nine, ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not a late person, but I'll still get up my reasonable time, Absolutely. get my ex my pro adequate sleep and exercise. And I was taking care of myself, but I still had to work harder than just like sitting around and going to happy hour with friends. And I don't drink anyways, but I would focus <laughs> my effort on doing my business. That was my yeah. hobby. Absolutely. So now when it comes towards this idea, like everyone who wants to do a business, everyone who wants to thrive 
it is going to require you to dedicate more time towards that business and it's going to require you to sacrifice and i think that's where that when i say hustle that's what it is i'm willing to sacrifice certain things and hustle on the side to make it happen when oftentimes you find a lot of people who are comfortable and if they're comfortable doing their day job and don't want to change that's cool you don't have to and it's not something that everybody needs to do but if you want to make a business thrive you're going to have to put some sweat equity into it as well to make it happen Yeah, no, I I love it. I mean, when you were telling the story mm. of the the candy, you know, we go back uh, when we were at school, and you know, I'm wearing my Barca jersey because they're playing today. Shout out! Don't tell yeah. me, don't, don't, don't tell me what happened. But we were those kids that will go to uh, this market on the side, and they will sell these T-shirts that or the jerseys that looked exactly the the original versions, right? <laughs> in Venezuela, and the original versions, let's say, it was a hundred bucks. We will we will buy these for like ten, right? And then we will go back to school, and they'll be like, "Where did you get that?" And then we're like, "Oh, we can bring it to you for like twenty five bucks or whatever, right?" So <laughs> so that was like that was the hustle back then. But we we're yeah. like we were solving their problem, right? Which it, yeah. Yeah. which was like, how, how do I find that t-shirt cheaper than the original version, but it looks exactly the same and it feels exactly the yeah. same. We're like, you, you will get in a lot of trouble here doing that. Yes, Let me don't, tell you. don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah. yeah don't, don't go ahead and do that. But like you reminded me like on that mindset, we're like, okay, we are actually solving this problem. And then sometimes when people go into, into sales mode, right, they completely detach the meaning of service, being of service to that one person and solving their problem. And they go into like this weird mental state where like, I need to push, push this thing to like whoever comes in front of me right and you were helping a fitness studio right now where that that's one of the conversations that we're that we're having with the people at the front where they welcome the people right these are people that are interested in in their health and their stuff and they're coming into the studio with a problem right whatever that is like let me lose some weight let me i want to get you know a, a little bit fitter because i have an event i want to keep up with my kids you know i want to stop rolling down the street like that's my case <laughs> and, and it's like okay perfect so the people at the front are terrified because that is and i'm quotation here that starts the sales process and we're like okay well We're, we're serving them, right? They're coming with a problem. We have a solution that a really good solution that can help them. So do you ever encounter something like that where you're like, okay, sales mode, no sales mode. What Did it come natural to you? And how do you, how do you navigate that with, with your client, with the people that you help? Yeah, I think so many people have a bad view of sales. Like to see it as the four letter word that is just like, that's so awful. And in actuality, because the reason it's the way to perceive sale, like mm. the sales has been uh, like been uh, victimized over the years and been abused mm. in the way that, you know, uh, unsavory characters have done it. And I think there's a difference between selling and also being a con artist. And mm. there are people, I'm not sure if you remember the movie like Boiler Room back in the days. I remember I was in school and I watched Boiler Room and I, and I don't think they should have showed us that in high school, but they did. <laughs> <laughs> they were... Um, And they were the things that they were doing to get these deals. I'm like, man, that is so that's so like that's so bad and awesome. Like they're able to convince that person and to do all these different tricks and strategies. And they were getting these people like making money off these people, but they were robbing people. It was unethical. They got in trouble in yeah. the end. Yeah. And when you look at many of the biggest sales movies that are out there, that's what it is. Like, yeah. you know, all, you know, Alec Baldwin and, you know, in Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross and, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street. It's like these people who are tricking and convincing people. But the great salespeople, if you make a movie about a great sales pre- person, nobody would watch it because it's boring. <laughs> it's like this person really brought value to this person and they, the client won and made tons of money and they also made money from it. This is boring. Where's the drama? Who's going to jail? So yeah. people have this stigma like, That's what sales is. Sales is not convincing people to do something. That's the issue. And I know that sounds blasphemy to some people out there. Sales is convinced, is helping people convince themselves. Jeffrey Ginnimer says, and I think he gets it from some of the greats like Zig Ziglar, said people love to buy, but they hate to be sold. Yes. Like people, I, I, I'd love to go and spend money. I'll go spend my, you know, what, a thousand dollars on an iPhone. But if I have somebody in the store coming up to me or the mall and say, hey, buy this nice iPhone. It's going to be beneficial for you, blah, blah, blah. I don't want you to sell me. And if somebody told me, you, you, you know, I got sold a car, I got sold a phone, I got sold the service, they're more than likely going to return that. But if somebody gets that ownership and said, I bought a car, mm. I bought a phone, I bought this new house. They have ownership. They were a part of that process and the seller helped them to make that decision. And that's what you want to do. So when it comes towards that that gym or that studio or that fitness uh, place where you're talking about, it's not so much as like, well, I'm, I, I hate the sales process now because I'm going to have to try to convince them. No, we want to solve problems. There's a moral obligation. If you have a yes. business, yes. you have a moral obligation. My moral obligation is that I remember when I was eating Wendy's 
dollar menu items over there on the call dollar menu but the value menu they had these like wendy's wraps and you know that two wraps you can get yeah there's a dollar each and i would get a cup of water and that's what i was eating for lunch because i was working a sales job and i was supposed to be successful and i wasn't being successful in the b2b sales and this sucked because this was a job that i needed to succeed at and i remember when i was my, my mom and i i made the first generation of family member the first person in my family to go to college here in the united states she sacrificed all this stuff and here i am begging her who's broke and doesn't have money can she help me pay rent and i felt so awful i'm like this shouldn't be if i'm in sales and i was able to get the proper learning and training and i started to become successful and i realized there was a formula there was a process if you could follow so then now my moral obligation is to help that person who's watching this video right now and they're out there and they're trying to sell they're trying to succeed and they don't know how to do it i have a moral obligation to tell that person there's a better way and that's yes. why we have the sales evangelist i'm evangelizing that there's effective ways of selling and i can show you what that is yeah. and it's that's what gu gu guides me and drive me so i'm not convincing people i'm helping them to convince themselves that my services can help them and when it comes towards that weight loss I want those people to get out of the, if I was in that situation or gym, I want somebody to have that time with their kid. I want somebody not to just fall asleep on the couch at seven o'clock because they're so tired and out of shape. I want them to be able to, to give the kids a bath and to spend time with them and, and enjoy and to read with them and to and, and give those kids that, you know, two and a half hours after work. That's yeah. what we're trying to help them. And if I can help them to do that and get that back, it's not selling. I'm helping Absolutely. them to get something better in their life. So. Come on, y'all got me excited. Let's go. I, I, lo I love the en the energy went from like a ten to a hundred, dude. I was like, heck <laughs> yeah, you know, I absolutely love it. And I'm just saying, this is on a scale from one to ten. So <laughs> your, your your energy was already pretty good, and I'm like, wow, uh, you got me all pumped up over here. And you mentioned two things that I, I wrote down here. I, I thought they were extremely helpful, right? And I think if, if that is the only takeaway that people get from today's podcast. I think is going to change their sales journey. First, sales is not convincing people. Sales is help people convince themselves. I think that is so deep right there. I mean, there's mm -hmm. obviously a process that comes with helping others convince themselves, right? About, hey, yes, I do need help in this. Like, I guess that art of realization, right? It's not about us just talking and talking and telling them what to buy, right? But it's about helping them discover what is the solution that they need to the problems? And we can go a little bit deeper. Oh, I, please. I, I can please. No, no, I can see that you you're, you're, you're like, you oh, yeah. I'm over here biting my lip. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> get to me. Let's go. Let's no, go. See, the way it comes down, though, it's like the there was, uh, if you anyone knows Gong, gong.io, um, they have amazing software. It listens to this, the conversation, like the Zoom meetings and, you know, the go to meet, uh, the go to meeting with the sales reps. And one of the things they discover is something that sales has had as like this folklore or this, this truth for years, but now it's been finally validated. So Gong, they listen to all of these calls and they prove that the top performing sellers on conversation speaks 30 to 40% of the time and let the client speak 60 to 70% of the time. It's like, mm. whoa, how is this happening? I'm a salesperson. I should have the gift of gab. I should talk a lot. And it doesn't come off that, that doesn't make you a great seller. And that's one of the issues when you see with these movies again, they're convincing people. And that means yep. you're, if you're trying to convince somebody so much, you're, that means you're more than likely not telling the truth. But when you ask deep, thoughtful questions, I can tell you, buy this water. It's going to be healthy. It's going to be good for you. And I can tell you all the features and the bottle is great and it's recyclable and it's BPA proof, blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. if I can say, hey, Luis, if there's a way that I can give you a product that's going to help you to perform better when you're doing podcasts, give you more energy throughout the day and help you to live a longer life, would you be open to hearing more about that? Heck yeah, let's uh, do it. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is it going to help us not be as awkward at the beginning of the podcast? <laughs> there you go. So you're going you're to start, you're starting to ask questions and I'll yeah. say, interesting. Tell me more. Why do you, what, tell me what does awkward mean? How is it, how are you going in that situation? Well, this is what we have, you know, the beginning of a conversation, yep. we're tired and we don't have enough energy. So whatever, I'm, you know, I'm making stuff up. But the yeah, point is yeah. I'm asking you thoughtful questions, going deeper into your problems. Mm. And then you're naturally becomes, you be, naturally come recognize and in, in self-diagnose and to problem solve that this solution may be a tool that can help you with that problem. Yeah. And I'm the guy because I've done that, that before and helped other people. So it's more about asking effective questions. And the less and the less you talk and let the prospect talks more, they convince themselves. Mm, I love this. So I, I want to transition a little bit to the sure. content side of things, right? And, and selling maybe through content. But before that... You told me that you were going to, you know, share with us the story about Calendly. And now I'm like, oh, what is it? What happened there? See, I got you there. I hooked you. That good you did, yeah. Right? <laughs> so what if I told you 
um, and this is some a process that I'm learning, right? Um, brands have this was all by accident. Uh, so brands have uh, like they, everyone's trying to get market share. Everyone's trying to do their thing. So what I start to look is learn to zig when everyone else is zagging. Mm -hmm. Calendly, they were trying to come into the sales arena more so. They're trying to define audiences. And so a couple of years ago, they started having features that really help. And I'm like, is Calendly built for sales? I mean, it's like, no, everybody uses Calendly. Yeah. But I am a salesperson, so I saw it from the sales eye. So I wrote a yeah. blog post, Calendly for sales. Mm. You know, reasons why I like Calendly for sales. 2019 on LinkedIn. Go look it up. So I'm giving you guys all my secret now. Yes, I'm not the greatest writer in the world, but I felt I wanted to write this piece. I wrote this piece. Calendly a year and a half later now, because mm. again, they're trying to now come into the enterprise space. Yeah. I was zigging when everyone was zagging. I, I betted on this and I didn't purposely bet on it. I just wrote a piece. But Calendly now recognize that sales is really good for their tools and it can help salespeople. So they started focusing on enterprise deals. So they started reaching out to people who are writing content and they're like, well, who wrote this piece? Go look for Calendly for sales. And all the articles are on Calendly. And the last one on the first page is mine. It's a LinkedIn post. Yeah. So now the uh, LinkedIn Pulse article. So now all of a sudden they're like, who is this guy? I want to check him out. So Calendly reach out and they're like, yeah. hey, can we interview you on why you like Calendly so much? And I was like, yeah, because they <laughs> saw that I'm in the sales arena. They're like, this guy feels like fits our bill. Yeah. So then they did an interview with me in a blog post and they're like, crap, that was good. Um, would you be open to doing a webinar? And we did a webinar. And because I was on a webinar, I was access to, you know, you know, a hundred, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, like 10,000 people Ooh. that was able to register for that. And I was able to get access to that. And it was because of content. So go back to this idea of, again, of writing effective content that tailored towards your prospects and towards pieces. And that content, some of you are writing content out there. They're like, well, Luis, you know, I wrote this piece and nobody did anything with it. You wrote that like two weeks ago. Like, give it time. Yep. Use the right keywords. Use the right things and take advantage of everything that you're sharing on this podcast. And over time, it took a year a year and a half, 2019 to 2020, before uh, 2021, before Calendly recognized that, even knew that piece was there. But yeah. now it's recognized and it built the weight and it, the connection. Yeah. So now I'm here in front of your audience and I'm here with you all watching this because of the simple fact that I took action. I wrote something and that content piece and Luis got a chance to meet me and brought me here in front of this audience. And some of you are going to reach out to me and that relationship is going to still grow because absolutely. I wrote a piece two and a half years ago or two years ago. Yeah, Come absolutely. On. Ah, you, you got the, the host clap. <laughs> the, the host clap. There we <laughs> go. Understanding ovation. Understanding too. ovation. So uh, the, like, this, is, this is very exciting, right? Because you know we, we came from a conference that, and one of the main things that people were asking us, right, is about this thing and why we publish and why we do this. And people coming to the show and our community, same thing. And for us, you know, the show has been alive since March last year, right? And uh, it's, congratulations! It, it, thank you, thank yeah. you, appreciate it. And and I and I love this because it's those seeds, and we, you know, we've been trying to talk about this concept of you know publishing real estate or content real estate or podcasting real estate, right? And it's all these things that we put out there into the world, which are our thoughts, right, in different way, shape, or form. For us, is is this show, and there's some ideas coming as well to experiment. But at the end of the day. Those ideas are gonna are gonna track back. People are gonna find us, right? And we go back and we look at the data. And there's episodes that we published, you know, five, six months ago, nine months ago, even a year ago, right? That are the most popular episodes because people continue to find those. So I want to encourage everybody: if your story was not the proof that you should start publishing now, right, to start planting those seeds and and grab that real estate, make sure that that you do, right? Figure out yes. a way to do it. <laughs> so. And you know, one of the things you said, what I always tell people, it's a land grab. There's a land, land grab, grab going on. And also, right now on, I don't know if I want to give out my secrets. Uh, should I tell them? Uh, uh, maybe we'll talk you, like behind camera. <laughs> if, you do, if you do B2B sales, you need to be on LinkedIn. Yeah. If you do, if you sell anything to business, and here's the reason why. You ever remember that you ever go to dance, Luis? Like, you know, you guys would go to dance back in the days in, in middle school, and you got that, you know, it seemed like that one idiot out there just dance with everybody, and just going around, <laughs> and you got everybody on the side being cool with their boys, and the girls, girls just like chilling and talking, yeah. you know, just bobbing. <laughs> but everybody else is dancing. That's what happens on LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn has 700 and north of 750 million users. About half of those people are active on LinkedIn. Wow. So let's say like, you know, what, what's that three? Let's just call it 350 just to be simple, 350 million. But off those 350 million, guess how many people actively post on LinkedIn per week? Uh, guess how many people actually post? Like 5% of those. 
No, I, oh, per month, actually, I think the number is. But it's, the point is, it's three million. Wow. So of the three hundred fifty, only three million. So off yeah, that, 100%. those all those people are getting the. I think LinkedIn has nine billion impressions per month or per week. So those three million people who are posting regularly, they're getting that nine billion impression. That's Woo! all going to them. Let's so go. it can you can do you can post content, micro blogs on LinkedIn, uh, write an article for on. on you need hey. to share content regularly. I, I'm a big believer in this and, and a big proponent of this idea that you need to you need to share information. And go back to this concept too. As these guys are jumping back in, there we go. They're D- coming back. No, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> if you can back up literally like 30 seconds, so people yeah. can actually get to hear that secret. I'm sorry. Today's yeah. technology is is not on our side. <laughs> <laughs> All good. So uh, it kept going. So I'm like, I don't know if I'm still alive. I'm gonna keep talking. <laughs> Appreciate but, it. But um. The, the point, though, is that when you take advantage of like LinkedIn and you're sharing content now, if you're those three million people, you share content mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, you share content on any platform because those things become like they're there forever. They're yes. there for forever. And no matter how many you try to delete them, I mean, Google has the hold. Right. So you, you get, those things are going to still be there and it's going to still be recognized. People go back and find my first ever video and I'm just like, holy moly, that was awful. <laughs> but it's there. And yeah. people find some of the podcasts like you're saying from from months ago and years ago. And it's like that's there. Like that piece is still helping them. Yes. And it's like, yeah, the content is still good. So you just need to start. The best time yeah. to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is today. Yeah. And for each and every one of us, we just need to produce content um your audience you're it. doing yourself a this your audience a disservice if you're not giving them content yeah there there's oh. so 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 many benefits and you know thank you so much for for sharing you know all, all these things and you that mentioned da- you know my, data my, is yeah, good yeah. And, you, and you said like hey my first video was up there right but at the and people are so scared of people go finding those those old videos but guess what you will become better over time and then they're gonna notice the difference we're like wow how much have they grown? How much has he grown? And then mm-hmm. the, the, if, if the value is there, they're going to appreciate it. The, the, you know, quality of the message or quality of the production, a hundred percent of the time. Yep. And uh, the quality of production will come because the resources will come. You're going to be able to serve. You're going to be able to help. You're going to be able to solve those problems to your audience. And I love it. So fancy homework for us. We got to start going to LinkedIn. Uh, maybe 45 live is LinkedIn maybe special. We'll do a 45 season five. live on, yeah. on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm just going to say that. Don't know. <laughs> I, I'm loving this, you know, and I mean, I'm, you have 1,400 episodes of your podcast, right? The, that is absolutely amazing, right? Unless there was like a typo on the form that we sent and I'm totally throwing this, this number out there, <laughs> right? But I mean, that's a lot of episodes. And I'm curious, right? What has been the role of that consistency for you, right? Not just on LinkedIn, but creating your own platform, where you can maybe have conversations with influential people in the marketplace, or you have a platform for yourself to, you know, talk about these pains and problems that your prospects are having and you're helping them solve the, the problems. What have been that, that effect that you've seen around your business? Great question. Um, as of Monday, 1493, um, I just checked while we're here. So let's, let's go, go. on fire. So. Let's go. So we started doing this. I started in 2013. So the, go back to like this idea of creating your own. Let's just put this in perspective. I was doing a software sales job and my um, my buddy, um, have you guys ever heard of podcast movement? But yeah, 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 the, the, the event, correct. Podcast. So my friend and I, we Jared Easley, he was one of the co he's one of the co-founders and he was a he and I worked together. I was a sales rep. He was account engineer, um, uh, account ma- uh, engineer and did the demos. And we would go around walking around a pond and we were coming up with these business ideas. And then he was like, you know what? Um, he went to New Media Expo and he's like, dude, podcasting is where it's at. This is 20, like 2011, um, 2012. And he's like, podcasting is where it's at. Um, this business ideas, we don't have enough money and the capability of doing it. I'm going to jump into podcasting. I'm like, oh, dang it, man. He's going to leave me yeah, out yeah. here. And then he went into podcasting. And then he was like, bro, you need to get into podcasting. So I started going to podcasting. He and Dan, Frank, and a couple others started to get together and started to say, like, um, they created, there wasn't a conference there for podcasters and they created podcast movement. Um, so I, I had had a fortune opportunity for a few years there to MC and be a part of that community and part of that world. Um, and, and grateful for the things that I've gotten opportunity to learn from and with podcast movement. So this idea though, was like, can there be money that can get from this? And I remember one, one of my other friends, I was sitting on his front porch and I was talking to him. I was like, man, I'm thinking about doing this podcasting thing full time. I'm just, I've been doing it for a number. I started in 2013 
and then it's like you know been going for a little bit and then i'm trying to do my own business sales consulting firm from it and he was like you know what do you need to do i was like man i just need to make a thousand dollars a month if i can make a thousand dollars a month that can pay off my port of the rent and my wife will be happy and you know she'll be it'll be good to go so a thousand dollars a month and he was yeah. like all right well keep working towards that man and um so this podcasting thing just really and i interviewed seth godin was my first wow. uh, podcast i listened to and then i just interviewed him last week yes. um, so you know eight years later so Incredible. it was really cool but in that whole point though what i'm getting at remember De uh, jose was my first client he listened to the podcast he saw it he's like can you help me out so i started paying for he started paying for something destiny i didn't know her at all she discovered my podcast she was local of fort lauderdale she started listening to it and then people started to pay, uh, purchase and i was like man there's something here i could coach these people there really is something so the podcast became an avenue for for me to be able to share wisdom and also to be able yeah. to start building tribe and i created a facebook group so now we have uh, sales people that come a part of our it's called the sales evangelizers and uh, nice. they come across this group and we started building this community and then next That's thing you awesome. know in 2015 we got sponsored by prezi and then we were like man this is super cool and then it came to the point where it's like can we jump ship and i was making more than that thousand dollars and we were consistent with it so it made sense for me to leave my full-time gig <laughs> But the community that came from the podcast and the yeah. opportunity and the content, it was just like I owned that. That was mine, per se, uh, my area rather than you know LinkedIn. Uh, obviously, like pod, uh, Apple and all these folks, they have, still have the podcast community. And uh, fortunately, my group is on LinkedIn, on Facebook. But again, I have my website and I have my email list. And all of that came from just this idea of doing a podcast and the clients yeah. from doing yeah. that. So it's like it is power in creating your own avenue. Now, I'm not telling everyone they need to go create a podcast. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would love for you to do so because TSC Studios will make money. We produce podcasts for major brands. And, nice. and that's my second company now that came from that. But um, the, the point, though, is that not everyone needs to do a podcast. But if your audience need that message, maybe they need live stream. Maybe they need like you to write a blog post for them. Maybe they need like, you know, you to go live on Instagram and create little reels. If that's for your audience, create the content that they need. Yeah. Give them what they need. And yeah. you just need to start. And if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And why not you? You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully that answers. Oh, yeah. No, 100%. I mean, if this is not inspiration for those <laughs> trying to figure out how to do content, please, like, uh, you can leave the podcast <laughs> right now. Uh, you know, I'm not, well, leave and come back because, you know, you, you can still <laughs> do come it. Come back. We need, we need you. Um, yeah. we, lo we love you. Just love. leave for a second, reflect on that, and then, and then come, come back. back. <laughs> yeah, we, we still love you. Um, and I love it, right? And you mentioned something at the end. It's like, hey, figure out what's easy for you to produce that your audience needs as well, right? A podcast for yeah. us, it was a vehicle that helped us create these conversations and then the business really evolved around it, very similar to, to you. But at the same time, it, it would have been impossible if it's something that we, never, we, that we don't enjoy actually producing it. So at first, we got to remove that friction and then like, where is my audience? Where is the people that I help? Mm -hmm. And then try to figure out the, and deliver that content in a, in a way that they can consume it they're used to and then evolve from there like you did with your LinkedIn posts like the, the current publishing yeah. that you do and everything that you do around your business. So thank you. I, th I think that's very useful for, for the people that are trying to start in their yeah. publishing journey. I, can I share one more thing with starting? Oh, sure. Absolutely. December 2013 is when the first podcast went live. My wife and I were on the way to go watch the movie The Hunger Games at the theater and because uh, I'd finished reading the books and yeah. we were going out to watch that and then Apple sent the approval. Your podcast has been approved. And we're like, oh man, this is crazy. And you're getting <laughs> like, you know, 30 people downloading it and or 30 downloads. I'm like, this is nuts. This is awesome. Yeah. And um, checking it all, all the time. And then um, mm. what happened though, I almost didn't do it, even though my buddy Jared told me to do it since 2012, right? In April of 2013, I launched my website and it was a WordPress site and it was like awful. And that's where I, I was like thinking, I want to do videos. I think that'd be easier than trying to learn the podcasting thing. It's too complicated. I could just do a quick video or play with it. I did video in high school and yeah. stuff. And maybe I could just edit a video. And that was my first video. And I did one or two of them. And then I stopped. And nothing from April all the way to December because I was afraid. I was worried and I was scared that what if it doesn't go? What if people don't like it? What if people don't like what I'm doing? What if people don't find benefit from it? What if it sucks? Um, fast forward now, 
to Donald in 2022. I'm so grateful. I've traveled halfway around the world because of that podcast that I was able to finally launch in 2013, the December of 2013. Um, and I've been able to have clients all across the globe. Literally, I can say that um, yeah. now. And it's really, really neat. And it's just so powerful through the medium of podcasts. And it's just so getting started. Yes. Just do wow. it. I, I yeah. love this. You know, th this is the way I perceive content. It's opportunity, yeah. opportunities, right? Content is opportunities. And the more consistent you're with it, the more consistently you're going to be in front of opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I feel yeah. like that's what happened to you right there in that story, right? You stopped, you didn't do it. And then you're like, you know, let me just be consistent with it. And the, the cool thing is that it's actually like an exponential opportunity maker because the more time you stay in the game, those results just start going right i was like wow oh yeah go ahead you I know what I, and what i call that there's a term that i and i was referring to my friends i call it like your almost like your digital wealth mm -hmm. so to speak i'm not talking about cryptocurrency or anything like that it's like i've and it's some people might say it's unfair or donald you're speaking you got lucky because you've been doing this for a long time Yes, I got lucky because I've been doing it for a long time. Exactly, I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, so therefore, yeah. of course, I should be getting lucky. So then like the people like Calendly, like you might say, well, you got that because you got mentioned in Forbes. Well, did you know what it took for me to get mentioned in Forbes? It was took like four years of producing content. And somebody said, well, let me mention this guy's one of the top podcasts. Yeah. Now, Donald, you get mentioned on all of these lists. So it's a bias. So as soon as somebody puts together a list of best sales podcasts, I am almost, I'm, I'm about 80% certain that I'm going to get mentioned on that list because they're going to go search best sales podcast. And of all those lists, I'm probably on 60% of those lists already. So wow. then therefore, I have an unfair advantage against you because I started a long time ago. And yeah. you could do the same thing as well. But if yeah. you don't, if you keep whining yeah. and say, well, Donald, this is unfair. My digital wealth has been increasing significantly because I've been compounding over and over. And I'm not going to stop. And it's unfair against you, yes. But you can start if you don't have to compete against me. You just need to start in your avenue. If you want to talk about like, you know, NFTs, not a lot of people are creating amazing things on that. That's just recent. Go create an NFT avenue and go do that. Yeah. And then you can grow your digital wealth over the next four or five years. But yeah. you're going to start being that expert. And this is why companies reach out mm -hmm. to me in large organizations like Canley that I'm able to work with because we shared content. They see my, my digital wealth, so to speak. And it compounds over and over and yeah. over and over and over and over and over. In 10 years Absolutely. when we're doing this podcast, I don't know where that's going to be at that point. But yeah. I'm super excited for that. Uh, so. th this is, we were actually talking the other day about a similar concept called we were calling it digital footprint right it's like hey yeah. what is that content that you need to create that is gonna leave a footprint like if it was on on a sidewalk right and a recently yeah. paved sidewalk that you put that footprint in there and once it dries up stays there right and people can find it and i think podcasting is one of those platforms where people can type you know sales the sales evangelist is gonna pop up right and since you have that library of digital wealth you're gonna have now the status i the, the trust of people multiple reviews and people are gonna say like okay this is a good one right but then there's yeah. the other side it's kind of like the quicksand footprint that you can post <laughs> something but then in 24 hours it's gone right which is the other yeah. social medias and i think there's the balance on what type of content you can use like i'm not saying that the quicksand footprint doesn't work right but how maybe can we use that to drive traffic to the sidewalk footprint? But I, I, if I'm being honest, I, I like your term yeah. way better, the digital wealth. <laughs> no, yeah. as, as, as we, we might have to license that one from you. <laughs> you know, but it, it makes it like, you look at sometimes you see like people who are, you know, the ultra rich and you're like, you know, they're ultra rich because they've been, they got old money. Like I'm in South Florida and we are close to Palm Beach Island. And you got a lot of these old money, like from, you know, years ago, like Henry Ford's people. I mean, those kids never have to work in any day. Maybe 10 generations don't have to work because money just keep compounding over and over. Mm -hmm. Somebody started something. We could go back. There's some, you know, other, you know, probably history behind that and how <laughs> yeah. they got the money is a different story. But the point is it compounded. And that's what I've been trying to do. So it's like, yeah, you can probably, you, if you want to compare it to that sense, I may be like a Henry Ford in my avenue. If your sales podcast is starting to try to start tomorrow, it may yeah. be a little bit challenging for you, but I, I've built that compounded. I've built that wealth. I've earned that wealth. I've yeah. sacrificed. I've done yeah. that stuff. And it's not fair for me to just now say that, 
you know, I'm going to give this all to you and make it happen for you. You need to sacrifice. I'm giving you the the strategy, but you need to put your work in. And it doesn't make sense for me to just, and it's not fair. It's not like we can take our audience and say, I'm going to take all my audience and I'll give it to Luis. Luis is like, I want to learn from Donald. So I'm going to tap into Donald and his audience and I'm going to bring work and bring value to his audience. And they're going to want to learn from me as well. And I might get associated with them. And that's what it is. So you can do stuff like that, but you can't just sit around and just say, you know, no, I, 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 I want to think of a blog and it, it didn't come to existence and I didn't get 10 million followers right away. Like you take your t- it takes time. You yeah. can't just get it right overnight. It takes time. Absolutely. And in this world, anyone can make it happen, though. And because if I did it, I'm a poor, crazy, I'm a poor little energetic kid from Jamaica, <laughs> Spanish down Jamaica. And if I were able to do this over time, I mean, what can you Absolutely. do with like all your talents and skills? Come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, let's go with the stats that you shared before. Just keep in mind, it's only like 1% of the active users that are actually publishing only 1%. One, yeah. So guys, there's a lot of opportunity out there. Start, you know, building the, your digital wealth. If you have been building it, good job. Keep going stronger than ever, <laughs> yeah. you know, stay consistent. And it, it just reminds me of that image that is like the guy digging for uh, for diamonds. And yeah. you have like two rows and it's like one is turning back. And he was just one step closer to finding the diamonds. And the other one is just digging there with conviction. Yeah. Donald, as, as we wrap up uh, with the sure. last couple of questions, right? What What's an action point that people can do today to to get that momentum, right? People that are thinking about publishing, maybe they just started, but they're, they're not grabbing enough traction. Like what can they do to, to help their business? The biggest thing that I would say that you can do to help grow your business and to 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 sh- to to start publishing and it, to get it uh, increase is to connect with other people doing the similar thing. So, like, mm-hmm. say for instance, like we're complementary, and one of the best ways, and I automatically, I'm just being transparent. One of the other the reasons too, I decide if I'm gonna find people that do want to listen to podcasts, I'm gonna go on other people that have podcasts. So our team, we have a goal to get me on four podcasts per month at least so you know nice. one a week um to somebody else because that's an audience that i can go in front of and that's going to more yeah. than likely come back and grow our audience in the long run from that so you need to find people who are who you can do uh who you can help and then they can help you as a natural byproduct of it but if you're just sitting back and you're rolling in your silo by yourself it's not going to work you need to make sure you can yeah. get with other people and the other thing that i would say too is find a mastermind um, that mm-hmm. was one of the best things that helped me. And a mastermind really is just like a group of people that have the similar thing, maybe at your level or higher, that are in a similar uh, space and you can have accountability. My mastermind, we meet every, we have a sales mastermind that's paid. So people pay us to be a part of that. But then we also have a mastermind with me and entrepreneurs who are colleagues of mine, friends, and we meet every Tuesday morning at eight o'clock it depends on time zone so eight yeah. o'clock Eastern time and we 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 challenge each other we yeah. go with um difficulties and we learn from each other i'm not the smartest one in a mastermind the day that i become the smartest one that's the day i decide that's the day i have to leave that mastermind because you need to always not be the smartest person in the group you need to learn from other people yeah. so you can find a couple of other folks online that are doing similar things if you're writing about nft or you're creating content find a couple of the people that are trying to you know build their side hustle on nft and then get together and every week talk about what's yeah. the latest things what are some of the challenges you're facing how can you help push each other what are some of the goals you're trying to achieve so doing that idea coupled with the concept of going with other people who have audiences helps you now i'm not trying to get on to yet on like say like a will smith uh blog or his you know whatever content that he produces i may not be able to get to that level yet i can't give that much value to will smith per se his audience yet maybe i could but (laughs) the point is i could find other people that are maybe right around my level that i can connect with and we can continue to grow with each other and 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 i think that's where we need to sometimes we we just sit back in our silos and want to do this by ourselves we can't succeed on our own we we need if you want to get exponential growth it requires you to connect with other people yeah absolutely i mean we we, uh yeah thank you for sharing we we heard uh john lee dumas right like a couple days ago and one good old john i love john john's a good friend of mine (laughs) and he and he's like man i mean what's it 20 podcasts 40 podcasts a month like as a guest right and it's like Mm -hmm. and he's been doing that consistently for years and years and years and that's why he has a massive audience audience of millions of, of, of downloads every single month right and you know you are executing on that on that path and it's like how do mm-hmm. how do we build the systems how do can we stay consistent how do how can we do this 
So shameless plug, if you have those questions first in sales, go to Donald right here. Make sure that scroll down, click the links that we're going to leave right below. And if you have any questions on the content on the system, how can we stay consistent? What can we create? Where can we go? How can we like explode? Be uh, omnipresent. Let us know. Slide into the DM as Bistro. Donald, uh, last question. Last question of the show. Sure. Beautiful. We love it. It's where will you be if you did not publish? If I did not publish, I would be a cog in the corporate wheel and I probably would be hopping from sales jobs because the company that I was working for, they eventually got sold and um, some people lost their job and I probably would have been hunting around and finding other jobs and going different places rather than being able to say on Fridays, half day, I want to go home and mm. I can end my day and go home with my wife and kid and go on vacation because I have a business now. And a team. Um, we have 14 people on our team. Beautiful. And we have an organization that grew. And I'm grateful that I published. But if not, I'll be a cog in a wheel and annoyed by my boss, maybe. But I'm in a thing that I love and yeah. I enjoy it. And I will keep hitting publish until the day it becomes boring and it hasn't gotten that point yet. So, yes, let's love go. It, Thank I'm you not, so much. Yeah, hopefully that never comes. But, you know, if it becomes boring, just let us know. We'll do like a three way <laughs> show, like with the bros and the Jamaican business bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's go. That's awesome. Um, we're we're going to have to have you back for round two one of these days. Keep talking about sales, obviously. So good. But then Thank you. share about all those stories because I heard something interesting that you don't like seafood, but I'm going to leave it right there. Hey, <laughs> yeah. That is true. I'm going to leave it right there. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, that, I'm sure you got so many good stories Donald, where, where can people find you where can con where can people connect with you what's the best way so here's the thing so i'm gonna tell you two i'm i've been able to learn from smart people like you guys um make sure you're you're uh, you're you're everywhere so people can find you so you can find me donald c kelly on twitter on instagram on linkedin anywhere donald c kelly um and I, what i would like for you to do is if you reach out to me on instagram or on linkedin just say you know Donald C. Kelly and say, hey, I connected with you after listening to the content as Profit Podcast. And I would greatly appreciate that. And I will talk to you. I'll literally respond to you. Um, so if you want to get really good connection with me right away, shh, go to Instagram. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, know, so, I know. Come on, guys. It, it, it works. I'm, I'm going to share. I mean, I kind of shared at the beginning, but this is the what we call the golden boulder instead of golden nuggets golden boulder that you share with us during that the webinar that i'm not sure if everybody grasps the power of that but it's the omnipresence outreach so yes like he said instagram is going to be helpful to stay in touch with him but in case that gets digged into the bottom of the inbox make sure you're reaching out in other channels as well you never know where where you're gonna <laughs> catch his attention yeah Donna, anything else you want to add before we head out Yeah, I just want to tell people if they're listening to this, this has and it's been beneficial to you. This podcast um, content is profit. I ask you to do something. Um, the brothers probably won't. They probably do it, but sometimes it takes an outsider to remind you. This is gold. This is amazing. And I would just ask for you guys to share it. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, leave them a review or on Stitcher or Spotify, tune in. It goes such a long way when they're able to read the reviews and see that people out there care for it. And if you share this with your friend or family, somebody else, that's great. So if you're watching the live right now, please just go ahead and share it. Tell somebody else about it. Tag them in the comments. And I know they'll appreciate that because I sure appreciate it when that happens to me. So this is a great stuff. And I don't say this on all the podcasts that I go on, but this podcast is amazing. Um, the content here is great. So you guys need to make sure you're helping them get the word out. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, though. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm super thankful and surprised after all those technical issues i'm like oh my god thank you donald you're absolutely amazing uh, no. all right guys with that said thank you so much for tuning into the content profit podcast go ahead and follow the show hit smash that subscribe button and follow us on social media at base resco that is right and if donald here today help you move one step closer to your goal please don't forget to share this episode and and leave a five-star review see ya bye guys